Hello everyone! Before the video starts, I need to let you know that this whole video is a paid promotion in partnership with Oculus. Every so often, you're going to see this disclaimer in the top left corner of the screen. This is to ensure compliance with FCC guidelines and disclosure that I was paid by Oculus, a headset was provided to me free of charge, as well as a copy of Resident Evil 4 VR. Resident Evil 4 VR releases exclusively for the all-in-one Oculus Quest 2 headset on October 21st, 2021. Enjoy the video. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Resident Evil 4 VR on the Oculus Quest 2. Starting from a new game, selected normal because I hadn't unlocked professional mode yet. Chose to set it to sitting. Oh, about 5 foot 7 sitting. I also turned off the tutorials for the purpose of this playthrough. Resident Evil 4 VR has multiple methods of control. The method that I chose was to use the first person first person controls like the FPS controls. Basically, you know, just left stick, move strafe, this, that, and the other. I opted for this instead of the uh, teleport scheme. Because I wanted to freely move around. There was no Get what it and in doing so, I'm able to move while I shoot. And that's one of the uh, big glaring differences between this version of Resident Evil 4 and other versions of Resident Evil 4 is that you can actually move while shooting. Oh, and uh, by popular request, I, I finally saved the dog this time. Sorry about last time, everyone. But we saved him this time. But yeah, we can move around, we can... We can aim freely, we can shoot. It's... It's, uh... It's pretty great. There's also another control scheme where you can, uh... Pull, uh, healing items, grenades, and your secondary weapons off of, like, different parts of your off of different parts of your body, but I opted for the uh, weapon wheel configuration because I think it best suits my playstyle. Although I think that doing it the other way might actually be a little bit more efficient. But I'll certainly play around with it in the future. Any who's in. So... One thing that actually makes it back into Resident Evil 4 is uh, some of the physics quirks, like uh, being able to stab these guys through the door and just huddle up here while we wait for the uh, initial village siege to run out. There's also multiple ways to open doors. Uh, you can either press A and have Leon do like his animations where he like kicks the door open, or you can press the uh, grab button on the controller of whatever hand you have free and uh, the door just kind of peeks open and you're able to just push the door open after that and uh, that in itself is going to be the fastest way to get doors open so it's like the kick would still be useful if you're trying to uh, 
if you're trying to knock down enemies on the other side. But otherwise, you, you're probably going to want to open doors by just mashing the uh, grab button. So the, uh, the controls for Resident Evil 4 in VR work something like this. At least the way that I have it set up, because I use the uh, weapon wheel, is uh, you can freely move your right hand to aim. If you have your knife equipped, you can just uh, swipe it whatever direction you whatever direction you feel pleased with, whatever angle you think is going to hit. And uh, by swiping the knife around, you, you gotta you gotta do it a specific speed in order for it to generate damage frames. You can also swap freely between the knife and the handgun in this controller style by uh, pressing the uh, left trigger or the trigger button on the left controller. I'll just say left trigger. And in my case, to open doors, it's the left grab button, which is going to be roughly where your middle finger is positioned. Also, you can taunt your enemies. They don't really—it doesn't doesn't do anything. Obviously, I'm just I'm just doing it to be funny. But it's so much easier to also like knock projectiles out of the air and whatnot. God. For safety's sake, we're going to run around and collect a few things. We'll go into this room here, get the shotgun shells and the money. There's also a flash grenade on the other side of the village over this way. Handgun ammo, incendiary grenade, pop that open. There's no animation for when Leon uh, vaults through a window, but if he jumps through a window, then a uh, it'll go into uh, cinema mode, and you'll see Leon just uh, flying through the window. Yeah, you can swap freely with whatever gun you have equipped and uh, your knife by hitting the L trigger. Uh, right trigger shoots. You just aim and shoot. Don't gotta worry about holding uh, holding R1 and aiming in order to shoot. I'm gonna re-equip the handgun. Pop that down, grab the pearl pendant. And uh, because vaulting is really fast, you could actually vault through both of those windows. I don't know if uh, vaulting would turn out to be quicker than just running to the door in the VR version, but I just did it the old-fashioned way. QTEs also are replaced with uh, full-on motion controls. So just uh, aggressively move the controller as if you are running away from the boulder. Pop these uh, spinels off of the top of the tunnel. Also, in order to reload, we uh, go, we grab the icon below the left hand in order to suddenly generate a, generate a magazine, and then we load it into the gun and we pull the slide. And it's pretty great. Pop that, grab the red cat's eye. It's just a couple of thousand extra pesetas. Shoot the handgun ammo, or sorry, get the handgun ammo. We're not shooting the handgun ammo, we're shooting the bomb. We'll grab the handgun ammo and we shoot the bomb. And also to uh, save your progress, you manually type it on a typewriter. You just you just hunt and pack. I actually, I actually rather like this. I think it's... I think it's kind of cute.
feeble humans. So once again, QTE, we just start by pulling the controllers apart, I guess, because yeah. Leon and Lewis are back to back, so we gotta pull them apart. Something like that. Bit of good old kinetic symbolism. Grab the handgun bullets and the uh, rifle ammunition. And we'll go down here and wait for this guy to start throwing his tool over there, and then we're gonna shoot him off the edge. Run through the doors, grab the shotgun shells, climb the ladder. Uh, yeah, the VR version, in order to open up boxes and chests and stuff, you have to actually like manually pull or push in order to open them up. In that case, we just had to pull a handle, lift it up, and grab the item inside, the left half of the emblem. And then we're gonna go up here, and we're gonna pop this barrel in order to get rid of the guy next to the other chest. We'll take the rifle ammo, we'll open it, grab this. The reason why I opt to just run through everything is because if I just stopped and shot everything, then enemies would just spawn unpredictably. But at least this way, if I'm running around, it would keep them all grouped together. And uh, on the way out, before we get a bomb chucked at us, I have to uh, put the emblems in place. You know, you just you just hit A, examine, and you just drag and drop in order to put the emblems in the door. So shoot that dude. We'll climb over here. We'll shoot him in order to stun him. Gonna jump out this window. I uh, was not quick enough on the draw in order to pull out my knife and slash it so that we wouldn't have to sit through that animation. Blew up the dynamite out of that dude's hand, took all of them out, ran right through. It'll pop this guy in the face or to stun him and run around him because he's uh he's a he's he's got a he's got a pretty good shot with that sickle. Man's hit me more times than I can count. I'll knock down the piece of wood propping up the well, the door on the well, get the brass pocket watch. And then we'll make our way over to the puzzle here, which, you know, you, you would normally push directions in order to uh, turn the ball, but this time you get to turn the whole thing manually, which is pretty cool. Some handgun bullets in this drawer, insignia key, and door. The start of 1-3, I'm just going to grab the incendiary grenade, grab the door open, and uh, we're going to swing by Dr. Salvador and uh, Don whatever his name is. I don't know. They're always like, they're always like Don something or other, the Ganados. All the while, we're going to be shooting them, stunning them, running past them. Make a quick turn. Squeeze by these dudes. Make sure you're running to your right when uh, dodging around. It's the Ganado with the uh, pitchfork always swings at the exact same angle. Instead of opening the uh, Instead of opening the trap door there, we gotta we gotta pull it. Pull a switch to open it. I'm glad they didn't. I, I'm glad they did it that way so that I wouldn't have to bend down to open it. Got a selection of good. It's our first uh, forced buy with the merchant, but. Don't need to buy anything. I'm gonna look up, pop that bird's nest, take the hand grenade, pop the second bird's nest over here. And there's rifle ammo. Agarralo! Oh, yes, 
Just like pointing, then you know you don't really need to. You don't really need to shoot them or anything. Just run right by. Because in the time that, uh, in the time that they were pointing, they could have done something, anything, but you know, just decided not to. They just. They just point. That's just what they do. That particular crow that I shot had a flash grenade. I'm trying to farm up as many flash grenades as we can for the cabin section. Get to deal with another boulder, so. Once again, wiggling them hands. We're gonna ignore that path over there. Instead, we're gonna. Take the hand grenade. We're gonna move this way. We'll blow up the trip mine. Squeeze by this guy. Blow up this other trip mine, and we'll shoot down the bird's nest over here. It gives us the antique pipe, which is worth quite a lot of money, actually. There's an incendiary over here, and uh, if that guy was not pointing and he decided to run at us instead, we would have just shot him and ran around him. Yeah, it's really easy to run around enemies in Resident Evil 4, in case you can't tell, because a lot of times they just kind of point at you. <laughs> so if you can remember which ones point at you, it's going to be generally pretty easy to run around those ones. So the fight with Del Lago is uh, fundamentally different. You can choose to either pilot the boat in third person if you get motion sickness while doing this. Or you can do it in first person like I did. I chose to do it in first person just because, you know, I had, had, better, had better range of control. As you can see, you're also uh, shooting at Del Lago with a uh, spear gun instead of uh, throwing the spears overhanded. I'm actually kind of glad they did that because throwing anything overhanded actually uh, really hurts my shoulder. You gotta make sure that the gold back point of the spear goes into the barrel of the spear gun in order for it to properly load. Every so often I uh, did improperly load up the spear gun. But I think it like magnetizes in place before we have to uh, let go of the grab button. Whenever Del Lago dives, uh, I always uh, reset my position by holding the home button on the Oculus controller. So that uh, that way, you know, camera is centered while I'm sitting center facing forward in my seat. And then that way I can look forward, left, or right. He will never be behind you. If he dives and is about to come back out, uh, just make sure you commit to a direction. Don't try to shoot him or anything. Because if you do not commit to a direction, then he will scoop you up in his mouth and you'll get knocked out of the boat. The uh, blue thing, in case you're wondering, is just the uh, boundary of my play area that I had set. Uh, the reason why it's so short is just simply because my uh, my bed is directly in front of me. Ah! 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 
That's like a safety feature you can turn on. Overall, Del Lago was pretty fun. So to start over here. It uh, notifies you that your inventory is full, and instead of uh, going into the inventory menu immediately whenever you try to pick up an item, we have to go into the pause menu and uh, rearrange everything before we can actually pick the item up. But so far I have used every little bit of my space, and I know i got to pick up another grenade, so I'm having to... Uh, make the decision of what to get rid of, and I decided to get rid of a box of handgun bullets since those are plentiful enough, and I pretty sparsely used them, so, you know, didn't really need to worry too much about preserving them. One might say that I just uh, got too many handgun bullets. So we're going to pop this barrel over here, grab the hand grenade, it's a static hand grenade drop, jump over here and uh, we can shoot these boxes down from up here. And uh, while we're going down this rope over here, the boxes will move into place so we don't have to wait for them or anything. So we'll jump. Before we move on, I'm going to, there's a uh, right where you might have been able to see the uh, the red laser dot pop up. Like right where I shot there, there is an amber ring. I wanted to uh, just shoot that before I triggered the horde of Ganado that appears whenever we uh, jump back over and then turn to the left. So these guys, you know, are just gonna try to shoot them in the face and try to get a Try to get in a kick or two. Hit the left grab button to grab the amber ring. And also the round insignia. So next we're going to fight Del Lago, but before we do, we're going to hit up the merchant and buy a rocket launcher. Yeah, I just buy rocket launchers for all the bosses. Got a selection of because the option is there, selling? and it's just, dude, get out of my way. I'll go ahead and sell all the treasure. Uh, in order to sell treasure, you have to manually Is that all drag and drop the treasure into the uh, into the cell pile, and they occupy uh, they occupy space. So you have to like, yeah, basically just do that and then hit the sell button. <laughs> Thank you. So now we have eighty-five thousand. What do you this buying? Does. And I use that to buy the medium attache case. Thank you. Stranger, stranger. And that gives us now exactly enough room to be able to move all the grenades that were collected, and then just move the rocket launcher right there, <laughs> and then hit buy. Thank you. Thirty thousand pesetas is a very, very good deal for just straight up. Passing by El Gigante. Thank you. So the rocket launcher is a two-handed weapon. We got to switch over to our two-handed weapons and move the rocket launcher into the two-handed weapon slot. 
The uh, one-handed weapon, two-handed weapon, and grenade system is uh, actually pretty neat. Pretty neat compromise for switching weapons. So during El Gigante's like initial uh, thing, we got to make sure that we grip the rocket launcher with both hands. There's a uh, there's a grab point on the other handle of the rocket launcher that you hit with the left grab button. And uh, in doing so, you basically move it into uh, two-handed aiming mode. And then once you do that, you have to pull the left trigger, not the right trigger, because that's where the that's where the trigger on the rocket launcher is. Is the uh, is the left trigger. So once you get used to that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. You know, just uh, point and shoot. Click button, make bad man fall down. I equipped my handgun here again. Just, uh... Because I would need it in the next scenario. Uh, there's three Colmeos over here. The Colmeos uh, don't really take any stun from uh, handgun bullets quite so much. They also don't attack you if your back is to them quite so often. Same as in the original game. So just rush the door, put the uh, emblem down, then go in. There's also a flash grenade in that uh, barrel directly inside. Flash grenades are absolutely necessary for the uh, cabin in the next chapter. So here's another example of uh, puzzles being completely redone, completely changed. We just gotta push the red button twice, the green button three times, and the blue button once. Same as in the original game, but you have to actually like push the buttons this time. They even redesigned the, uh, the chapel very, very slightly. Just put the pedestal a little further out and just sort of uh, extended it. Where's the Armature did do that for uh, several rooms. Also, I seem to have forgotten what direction the door was. We don't gotta grab Ashley, we just jump down and uh, move forward. Trigger the cutscene and uh, end the chapter. Move over to slot 5, over right, hunt and pack. There's a red herb and uh, some randomized treasure in the barrels directly behind, but the main thing that I wanted to pick up was the red herb because there's... Uh, I wanted to sell yellow herbs in order to get uh, 10,000 pesetas for like a full red, green, yellow mix, which is why I pick up healing items. Like I'm picking up healing items with the express purpose of selling them. There was a bird's nest as soon as we got out of the door. We popped the uh, popped that wagon, took out the ganado on the way, and uh, shot the two bird's nests. Got some more treasure out of those. If we actually opened that barrel in 1-3, uh, there would have been some TMP ammo in there. Gonna move over to Pueblo, and what we're gonna do next is we're going to climb up and we're going to have Ashley wait at the top of the tower. Wait! It's gonna be the safest place for her while we take out these Ganado. With Ashley in uh, the VR version, because uh, Ashley is uh, actually made to be a little bit more sensitive to like whenever you are pointing your guns everywhere and stuff like that. And also her tracking is a little different. So we can't just really run by these guys anymore. We actually have to, we actually have to fight them. I haven't found a quick way to get around them, so I just decided to just play very conservatively and uh, you know, lure them over this fence and just slash them and uh, hit them while they're on the ground in order to finish them off. Uh, 
Any Ganado that has a torch is going to blow fire, and uh, if you hit them while they are blowing fire, it causes massive blowback damage. Take out the uh, take out the uh, bear trap right there. Equip the shotgun. I almost caught that axe directly to my face. And because it is nighttime, we are going to encounter more Plaga. But I'm actually doing my best to uh, not use any of my stronger ammo where I can help it because we are about to go into the uh, the toughest part of the early game, which is the cabin siege. I'm actually waiting a bit in order to take him out because I wanted to take this guy out really quick and make sure that he wouldn't uh, pop a Plaga. I'm not sure if the fire breathers can pop Plagas or not, but I uh, just had to make absolutely sure of that. There can only be a maximum of two Plaga on screen at one time. But also I decided to just go ahead and grab Ashley and uh, we're going to try to just get Ashley around the uh, around the Plaga over here and then we can just go ahead and move. actually all the better that I didn't even have to shoot that Plaga because it would have taken a lot of ammo. Or one rifle bullet if I actually went and bought the rifle, but it's kind of a waste of money this early on. I equip the shotgun here and uh, jump over here. Then decapitate this guy. I'm stopping for a minute just to make sure he doesn't pop a Plaga. He didn't, so next I'm going to reset the room and come back. The reason I wanted to reset the room is because the Ganado will return to their original unaggroed positions, and in doing so, I can have Ashley hide again, and then I can just take out the enemies that would uh, be in the way on the way over. The first time I attempted to record this, I was having issues with uh, getting around certain enemies. And in general, I might recommend doing this, even if you're doing it in one shot. Just jump over here and uh, we'll go ahead and take out these guys. So with the shotgun, you can you can hold it in one hand, but uh, you have to, you have to cock it or you just do a tactical reloads. Personally, I like to use tactical reloads with the uh, standard shotgun because it uh, counts as the gun having been cocked if you just uh, if you just load the shell into the uh, chamber. So you're going to see me do that a lot whenever we actually get to the cabin section. But now we're going to exit and re-enter in order to return those other Ganado back to their original de positions, and then I'm going to save my game again, and on the next segment attempts, I can just run around the Ganado on the way over to the cabin. So once we've loaded, all we gotta do is turn around and uh, jump over this way. Ashley will follow us. No Ganado, we're gonna get in our way. Just gotta make sure that we shoot these two bear traps and uh, 
Also shoot that box over there. That box actually does have some goodies in it every so often. Sometimes I found grenades, sometimes I found rifle bullets. And then we're going to upgrade our shotgun here at the merchant. Got a selection of good what are you selling? Ah <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? What are you buying? Yeah, this upgrade is something is that, that we want 100 percent just <laughs> upgraded as much as we can. It is absolutely worth Come the money spent. Anytime. Especially in the cabin section. Just getting those extra two uh extra two points of damage. As soon as the siege section starts, we'll pick up the red herb, the yellow herb, the shotgun shells. Green herb, incendiary grenade. And uh, we'll go into the inventory and combine a red, green, and yellow in order to make room for this other hand grenade and this other flash grenade. We're going to equip our handgun and bash these things open. We're just going to let them right in and drop a grenade, do a shotgun to push them back. And uh, we're going to finish off any uh, stragglers over here. Every so often, Plaga will pop out. And uh, if it's only one Plaga, it's probably fine to just go ahead and uh, to just go ahead and shoot them with the shotgun. At this point, I hadn't used any shotgun shells throughout the entire playthrough. If you have a uh, weapon in hand, like a one-handed weapon in hand, for instance, you can actually switch to the other one-handed weapon while it is out. And you don't have to sit through an animation while it's... Uh, when you go into the menu in order to equip it, you know, kind of similar to uh, how it is. In all the other versions of Resident Evil 4. Also, be very careful with grenades because once you uh, once you pull the pin on a grenade, its uh, inertia will follow you backwards whenever you start moving if it is still in your hand. So if you're trying to like drop it over banisters and stuff like I'm trying to do, then it will follow you in that in whatever direction you push the stick in. Whenever there are two plaga on the screen, always, always, always flash grenade. It is absolutely not worth trying to save these flash grenades. Just go ahead and use them. This is what we've been saving all of our grenades for. Leon, upstairs. Once he says Leon upstairs, absolutely follow him upstairs because the crowds here are pretty brutal. Flash grenade, handgun ammo. Try to sidestep any sickles they might throw at us. Yeah, that's something that you just absolutely could not do in uh, other versions of Resident Evil 4 is just sidestep sickles. To be honest, I uh, view that as a quality of life improvement. I like having that extra movement option to dodge sickles. At this point, whenever we're upstairs, uh, there's going to be a lot more places for enemies to just swarm us and whatnot. So it's like, if you see a Plaga, just go ahead and start using flash grenades. So just go ahead and start chucking them. Also got to watch out for uh, any Ganados coming in through the windows. Whenever that happens, just... Keep blasting. Whenever they hit the ground, they will take more damage, and uh, it also enables us to uh, keep better track over uh, enemies that might be coming from downstairs. 
They tend to come upstairs more if uh, you are upstairs. Fortunately, they were pretty manageable that time. I was playing on DA9. Resident Evil 4 has a hidden difficulty adjust system. Basically, the better you do, the harder the game gets. And that would mean if you aren't taking damage and if you're landing shots, then your DA score is going to go higher. And consequently, your uh, DA rank is going to go higher. The maximum on normal difficulty is DA9. And I'm playing at DA9 pretty much throughout the entirety of this playthrough. With uh, DA10 being a professional exclusive, and professional is always hard locked to DA10. Next, we're going to pull the sliver to the right. There's some TMP bullets on the log over here. They're going to equip the handgun, and there's some chains on that gate over there. We're just going to shoot them from over here, shoot down that boulder, all before El Gigante spawns. After that, we turn around, kick this down, pick up everything in this shack over here, back up. Ashley will follow us, don't worry. We gotta make sure we pick up the old key in this shack before we move on. Once we do so, we uh, pop these chains over here, knock it down, hit the gate over here. You also gotta make sure that you manually turn the gate key. That's the thing about keys, you have to remember to actually like manually turn them whenever you put them in. Which is a... Uh, Neat little piece of immersion. In this locker over here, there's some rifle ammo. By the way, I should note, with reloading the handgun, something I didn't mention before, because it was just like back to back to back, everything is so fast, everything going on. Uh, you can actually either pull the slide to load a bullet in the chamber, or you can just uh, hit the trigger, and then the slide will, uh, the slide will close automatically. So like after you load up the load up the mag, you can just pull the trigger, and then it'll be ready to shoot. Which is by and far the quickest, most efficient way to uh, get firing again. Yeah, these dudes over here, you know, we don't we don't need no stinking rifle. We just gotta just gotta just gotta pop them. I should also note that uh, the mag automatically magnetizes to the bottom of the gun within a specific distance, so you can just do dumb little tricks like catching the mag with the bottom of your gun. going on with my left hand, I, uh, I had an itch that I needed to scratch. So we'll jump through here, open this here, there's a flash grenade, and some handgun ammo. We need flash grenades in a couple of sections of the castle, but fortunately not that many. going to make a save before the boss. First, I'm going to queue up the incendiary grenades and then grab this ammunition over here, then go ahead and make the save. So the Mendez fight is largely the same 
as it is in other versions of the game. Just got to keep in mind that uh, the game runs at 60 FPS, so the tick rate is the same. So it takes four grenades plus the explosive barrel to kill Mendez. Only thing is, you gotta know how to throw grenades in this game. And the way I like to do it is I like to sort of push the grenades away from my body. That's kind of what I figured out. Sometimes the grenades, you know, they just won't uh, let go, even if you have the grab button released on your dominant hand. So we can't throw an incendiary grenade at the barrel because if we do, then we die. That's unique to the VR version. These guys are gonna, he's, well, he's gonna come back down that way. Not these guys, that guy, Mendez, is going to come back down that way. And then we are going to throw one more incendiary, finish him off. So yeah, barrel. Can't throw the incendiary, so we gotta pop it manually with the handgun, meaning we gotta do an extra cycle. Unless I'm doing it wrong. But the incendiary grenades are also very, very much different from other versions of the game. But while we're up here, we gotta make sure that we grab the uh, the red green and yellow herbs here so that we get another 10,000 pesetas. Very, very handy. Also be extra careful with incendiary grenades to not walk into them whenever the uh, Are you okay, Leon? Whenever the flames are still present because you will take damage from that. That pretty much ends the village section. Next we're going to head back up the gondola. Gondola, gondola. I'm just going to equip the handgun. We're to get ready to shoot the truck. game definitely went through a lot of very interesting reverse engineering. Although a lot of the enemy AI and event scripting seems to be the same. how everything has a physical element now. I think that that in itself is really cool. So the truck, we either got to shoot the Ganado in the face or we got to blow out the engine. Whichever happens first. And then we got to back up on the way up the stairs. The reason why I back up Oh, but first, the uh, the treasure that you get from the back of the truck is actually sitting, like, right next to the truck. You don't actually get it from the back of the truck. It just falls out there. But uh, the reason why I'm walking up backwards is so the Ganado here don't spawn. Then I can grab the treasures from these barrels. But uh, I want the Ganado to not spawn, because they actually will abduct Ashley if you just straight up run. Because Ashley's tracking is a little different, I think she actually takes a little longer to actually get started on moving forward. I'm gonna cancel the save and actually do some uh, merchanting and menuing here. Yeah, every so often I like to uh, reset the position of the Oculus headset. You gotta be careful not to break that box back there because there's a snake in it. Two 
the spinel over here. Welcome. Probably actually didn't need that herb, but it was still a good idea to combine that. Things on. What are you buying? What First up, we're going to ah, sell herbs, and we're going to sell all the treasure we got. Is that all, stranger? <laughs> so, got an Thank extra you. 40k. What are you buying? We will buy the stranger? large attaché case. Thank you. Which will give us enough room to pick up Is the rifle. All, stranger? We don't need any more rocket launchers until much, much later, and we just get a free one in, uh, 3-2. Well, 3-3, actually. <laughs> Thank you. I also decided to sell my handgun and get the what blacktail here, selling? although I think it probably would have been Is that all? <laughs> a much better option Thank to, you. uh... What are you buying? Pick up the TMP instead. Is that all, stranger? The black tail is really good, though. I just like the, uh... Thank you. I just like the way the gun... What are you buying? ...punches. It's got a nice quick balance... Or a nice balance of... All, stranger? ...quick firing rate. Thank you. ...power. But I feel like in the VR version... The TMP might have been a better choice. Also, for the uh, for the rifle, Thank don't you. upgrade your uh, ammo capacity yet, because rifle rounds are still a bit scarce. I saved up every rifle round up to this point in the game, and it was 25 rifle rounds, Come back, plus the 10 that are already in the gun. So, what I would strongly recommend is just use the uh, use the rounds you already have in the rifle, and then use the capacity upgrade to refill the mag, so that way you get free rifle rounds as well. Very, very important. Now begins the start of 3-1, which is one of the more brutal chapters in the game. If you take it nice and slow, it's not as brutal as 2-2, but I would say it's still... I would say it's still pretty bad if you're trying to, like, rush through it. Can't be a run killer if you're not careful. So we gotta zoom in here, and uh, there's a guy next to the catapult up there. So we take out these three guys before we uh, trigger the catapults here. Tell Ashley to wait, and then once these catapults are done, we're going to move forward. We're going to equip the handgun and blow up this barrel over here in order to take out the zealot up there. Then we'll tell Ashley to follow. Shoot that guy from afar, and then pop that barrel in order to get rid of the last catapult. I like to just go ahead and suplex this guy. Suplexing is actually really handy because... If a suplex decapitates an enemy, then that enemy will not spawn a Plaga. It also does quite a bit of damage. So yeah, if you just chain suplexes over and over again on Zealots, it will... It will greatly be to your benefit. More enemies are spawning in, so got to use this uh, opportunity to be cranking this as fast as I can. And yeah, you can see it just goes by really fast. And then you just got to pull the lever in order to shoot the cannon. There's no cutscene here this time. You're still in control of everything. Also, enemies do not despawn after you use the cannon like they do in the other versions of the game. So you have to uh, you have to be aware of any more enemies if you're going to go back down and uh, collect items. Like I usually like to do. So yeah, 
Uh, you can see that I uh, reached the boundary, <laughs> the uh, play area boundary that I had uh, established on the Oculus headset. I'm not colliding with any objects, I assure you. I just have that drawn there because my bed is right there in front of me. Happens to be on the floor, so I just always happen to go outside of that boundary every so often. Once we hit that s torch there, we can get the spinel. We did oh, not Mash, mash, mash. Grab the shotgun shells. Take the platinum sword. And once we do that, uh, we're going to go upstairs and trigger these three zealots up here. The way that zealots in this area spawn in is a little bit different. Probably because we're dealing with a free camera instead of a semi-fixed camera. A semi-fixed over-the-shoulder camera. But yeah, I'm waiting for... Uh, Waiting for the Zealot to get back up so I can just keep chaining him into suplexes. Basically, once the damage of a suplex exceeds a Zealot's HP, then it will result in a decapitation. And once again, we won't be spawning in any Plaga. Because the Zealots here actually spawn in Type 2 Plaga, which uh, do result in an instant kill, so be mindful of that. Yeah, in order to get, in order to trigger a suplex, you know, you just shoot the leg. Hopefully it results in the uh, correct stun animation where it brings the zealot down to their knee. But so far I've just been uh, shooting them and having them land on their backs. And once that's done, you're going to go up here, grab the treasure box, grab the golden sword. Not bother putting down the Platinum Sword. Reason being, I was uh, worried that if I stopped to put down the Platinum Sword, then the other Zealots who spawn in behind us would spawn in. I'm trying to get Ashley to come in, and then we'll put in the Platinum Sword. And uh, just get out of there as quickly as possible, because more Zealots are about to spawn. So I think the Zealots actually just uh, spawn in a little late. I don't know if that's like a professional thing, or if that's like a Wait. VR version thing, but... It feels to me like it's a VR version thing. I have Ashley wait by the double doors. We're only going to need the handgun for this section. You just got to strafe around these guys. Go up the stairs. Grab the green herb. There's a velvet blue in the barrel and then the castle gate key. And then when enemies start to spawn in, spawn outside the door and uh, stream on in. I'm just going to pop the barrel and leave. If there's any enemies in front, that's when we switch to the shotgun and uh, get them out of our way. But the reason why I had Ashley wait here is because of the time that it takes to actually like turn the key before we can actually get into the Grand Hall. We don't have a uh, dialog box pausing all the action. We don't have that luxury this time. Purple gem there for the uh, for the uh, golden mask. If you decide you want to get the golden mask, there's a static rifle ammo drop in that vase over there. There's actually quite a lot of ammo in here. A lot of ammo and money in this area. Gold bars, yellow herbs in the uh, barrel over here take the prison key out of the painting's hand. And we'll shoot that. The, uh, well, first I have to reload my gun. Shoot the, uh, shoot the shotgun shells off of that, uh, support beam. Get more rifle ammo, incendiary grenade, and then we'll use the key. And then after that, we're going to save our game again. So that, uh, if we get hit by the Garador, we don't have to start all the way back from the start of 3-1. Wait!
¡Mátalo! ¡Cogedlo, cogedlo, cogedlo, cogedlo! que escape de la isla de
Wait. So upon reloading here, we're going to head back into the water room. The uh, scythe zealots will be there. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to lure them all the way around. Just giving them a little Bruce Lee taunt, you know? Watch the hands. Watch the hands. Then we're going to move this way. Hopefully Ashley responds fast enough. Oh, she did. That would have been... That would have been quite awful. We got the rifle just in case one of these guys decides to get in the way. But uh, really, I could have just run right by that guy. I think. Look, there's a crank over there. And once we trigger this cutscene over here, a uh, checkpoint is triggered. So we can go back to the load game menu. Then just hit load last checkpoint. And all of those zealots will be despawned. Surely it is cheese, but... When you take into consideration precisely how bad the rest of this room is... There is literally no shame in taking advantage of a checkpoint in order to get rid of enemies. I do that at least a couple of times. I'm gonna get rid of the uh, handgun bullets here and this green herb so that we can pick up... Uh, oh, I accidentally opened the home menu. Normally I'm used to the start button being on the right side of the controller, but... Anyway. Watch out for me. So we're gonna chill out here. There's a there there is a there is an abnormal number of enemies in the VR version. Like basically they just keep spawning in. If it was the normal number of enemies, I would agree that uh I would agree that it's too easy. So you just gotta make sure to juggle them all. Just uh, just stand your ground, basically. If they don't got a uh, if they don't got a shield in front of them, then use the shotgun. But you know that guy's got a shield right there, so we're just gonna swap over. So earlier I mentioned that uh, you could, if you had your two-handed weapon out, you could just go into the menu and swap another two-handed weapon at uh, no animation cost. So we're able to basically just hot swap the uh, shotgun and the rifle very easily. Yeah, usually these enemies over here, they come in waves of twos and they just happen to show up nearly every time you kill one of the zealots that is uh, right next to people that is trying to abduct Ashley. So yeah, I've always found, in the previous versions of the games, I always found Ganado Zealots to just be trolly, very, very obnoxious enemies. So it's like being able to run and gun them and just be unbelievably cruel to them is 
absolutely satisfying. Also, in general, I uh, try not to use I try not to use two-handed weapons with two hands if I can help it because it's just a lot easier for me to aim <laughs> with one hand. For some weapons, it is necessary to use two hands, but with the rifle and the shotgun, not at all. few more items in this room over here. In this cabinet to the right is shotgun shells. I'm gonna knife this open, open it up, and uh, there's a hand grenade in there as well. But uh, our inventory is full, so we gotta talk to the merchant. Welcome! Yeah, my inventory management would have been a Got lot smoother if I just opted for the TMP instead selling. of the Blacktail. Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. Is that all, stranger? I gotta get rid of that first aid spray as well. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty soon. We're not, uh... <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Gonna need those regular hand grenades anymore. Yeah, we gotta upgrade capacity Is once. Because I was already pretty low on <laughs> rifle rounds. Thank you. And then upgrade firepower. All the way pretty early. There's no need to upgrade capacity on the regular shotgun, especially if you're just using tactical reloads. Come back any time. Yeah, I definitely should have uh, upgraded the power of the rifle there. It's cool. I'll remember it for next time. Head into the prison now. Take the flash grenade, that static flash grenade drop in that barrel. And then we're gonna zoom in and you can see the uh, the spot in the air where the Navistador is salivating. And basically you just trace the uh, salivation to its head. And if you pop the Navistador in the head with the rifle, you score an instant kill. So the Navistadors here, they are uh, they are aggroed immediately. They don't just uh, they aren't just invisible in the pool below. So here we gotta actually fight them legit. Recommended course of action is uh, certainly to use tactical reloads. Just tactical reloads and uh, the black tail. Swap in for the shotgun if they're getting too close. But yeah, always be mindful of, uh, always be mindful of where both of them are.
with enough practice, you'll be able to tell if there's one blur or two. We got a little far away, so the uh, Navistador there just went back to its uh, tethered position. I was looking around, I thought maybe it went over my head for a moment, but then I remembered Navistadors don't do that. Navistadors were always my least favorite enemy in Resident Evil 4, but uh, being that you are able to move and shoot now, fighting them is really not that bad. There's Velvet Blue, handgun ammo, and TMP ammo in here. We're going to eek right on in, and we're going to move forward until we hear the door close. Once we hear the door close, that means that we are in the perfect position to pull out the rifle and spawn kill this first Navistador over here. You gotta watch where the drool is. Steady. Steady. Also, another one's going to pop out of there. That's our uh, that's our cue to try to aim for the head. Otherwise, we're going to do the same thing we did before, tactical reloads. And we're going to scoot over here. And uh, this guy over here does not leave his position. So we're going to look for the drool and pop him. He'll only come after you if you uh, go into any of the cells to try to pick up the items. So we want to get rid of him first before we go exploring the cells. That yellow herb is worth money. Decided to reload my gun before ditching the ammo. You don't generally need any more than 50 handgun bullets if you're going to use handguns. Because more often than not, the handgun is just there to, uh, as a tool to stun enemies. But being that you can run and gun in this version, I would say that the TMP is actually a much better option. Also, I had too many flame grenades, so decided to get rid of one so that I could make another space for some shotgun shells, because we can always use shotgun shells. Also, Leon's got one of the first smartwatches. We can actually see, like, how many bullets we have overall, how many pesetas we have, our time played. It's pretty handy. Don't need to go into the menu for any of that now. Going to pull out the rifle here, because once we exit here, there's going to be two Novistadors spawning into that hole over here. Give her one, get rid of two. But yeah, Navistadors, they drop uh, red eyes, green eyes, and blue eyes. And if you combine a red, a green, and a blue into a butterfly lamp, then you are able to sell the butterfly lamp for the best price possible. So once we're done with that area, we just uh, make a run for it. There's two more Navistadors in here, but we don't want to bother fighting them. They're not worth they're not worth the ammo. Or the time. Or the risk. It's velvet blue here, and we're just gonna strafe over here. And a Vistador tried to attack me, but I was too fast. Go through the pendulums here. Take the velvet blue. And we're out of there. The uh, explosive radius of grenades is uh, very, very much nerfed, so we can't just throw a grenade at the Zealot and hope that uh, we can take them all out.
But yeah, about about where you saw the incendiary grenade. Right about there. That's about the same explosive radius as the regular grenades as well. One of these guys is generally going to spawn a Plaga, so watch out for them. We'll shoot these guys as they come up the ladder. And then when they're all on the ground, we're just going to chuck another incendiary. Just take all of them out at once. Make it so that none of them spawn Plaga because incendiary grenades are awesome like that. Illuminatus pendants and spinels. A lot of them. Although I think I missed one. Past Carsey, why did you do that? Probably because I got so caught up in... Uh, making sure that uh, they were all down and dead. Right here, we're going to save before the next room, because the next room is a bit of a doozy if we uh, mess up. We don't need to see the merchant here, so we're just going to go ahead and proceed. There's a red herb here we can combine with the uh, green and yellow mix we got earlier. And once we open the door here, just move to the left, hit the barrel, jump through. We have iframes while we're going through the uh, window. At least I'm pretty sure we do. Because you got iframes whenever you jump through the window in other versions. We're going to run around here, blow up the barrel. Anything that got hit by the barrel and didn't die, we're going to finish off with a single shot. Because they have like 1 HP, this somehow survived by like 1 HP. Gold Helmet Zealot, so... Just got to deal enough damage to it for it to die. Be very careful in this situation because the two that were down below that we ran by earlier come through to get to us. In the cinematic mode we uh, actually do not take any damage. We have full life frames. So their uh, morning stars were able to completely miss. I was able to completely dodge the morning stars I should say. Of course I just decided to shoot that guy in the head and Sure enough, a Plaga spawned. Quick ammo check. And uh, that's everything. The other red helmet zealot that we saw earlier is not going to follow us. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip a flash grenade. And here's how we deal with the red zealot over here. In getting him so that he doesn't uh, spawn a gun turret downstairs. We just throw a flashbang at the first painting on the left. And if done correctly, he will be stunned, and we have exactly enough time to run up to him and pop him in the head twice. Sometimes it may take a third bullet, so please be aware of that. And then we can just open the door with the gallery key. Velvet blue there. And then we're going to hit... All the buttons in order from left to right. One, two, three, four. And then hit the check mark. Take the rifle ammo and handgun ammo here. And once we go in here, we're going to go directly into the room to the right. In doing so, the enemies will bunch up and follow us over here. But they'll also be pretty slow, so they won't get hit by any rocket launcher zealots that uh, try to hit us through the window. We have to manually push this button this time in order to disable the security. Take the handgun ammo. 
heard a scythe getting thrown. If a certain number of enemies die, then it will spawn in some crossbow zealots, and if the crossbow zealots spawn in, we're going to have a bad time. Decided to shoot those guys in the legs and uh, just go. There's two zealots over there with rocket launchers. We're just going to ignore them completely and just run. But it should be known that uh, they only take one bullet to kill the rocket launcher zealots. So once you get next to the uh, the uh, statue piece that you need, you can just go ahead and pop them and just take them out of the equation. And I don't think they even count towards the uh, number that are necessary to die in order for the crossbow zealots to spawn, so I think you might be safe by just shooting them, because they don't add to the total. Get the shotgun ready and we'll get the incendiary grenades ready. Incendiary grenades are going to come in real handy against the Colmillos because incendiary grenades actually kill Colmillos in one shot. Shoot down the spinel over here. And uh, these, crows, uh, these crows over here actually have a little bit more HP than usual, I think. But all the treasures here are uh, either on the upper half of the bird bath or the lower half of the bird bath. Incendiary grenade and treasure box. Just take all the money. This maze here isn't uh, isn't too bad as long as you stay only on the uh, on the left hand side. I see. <laughs> But if it's, if it's your first time in here, then yeah, you're going to get turned around a lot. Just keep in mind that the uh, easiest way to take out Colmillos is to wait for them to dodge once. Because when, they're, when they dodge once, it's like they're going to they're gonna run up, then they stop, and then they dodge. They move out of the way before you shoot. And uh, that's when you take your shot because they're about to charge after that. So just wait for the dodge and then shoot. There's three Comillos over here. I don't think they ever break out of that cage in there, but... Still tossed an incendiary grenade to get rid of all of them. Got some rifle ammo out of the deal, so it's not a bad trade. Incendiary for some rifle ammo. There is a yellow herb over here. And uh, once we cross this uh, this junction over here... We gotta listen, because a Colmillo can either spawn either in front of us or behind us, and in this case he spawned directly in our way. So two shotgun shells and a few shots from the black tail were enough to finish him off. And we'll take the right half of the Moonstone. Go down and we'll just... Uh, Open this over here and get this other red gem. I didn't get the uh, treasure that combines with those, so I wound up selling them. And then lastly, we got to make sure that we have an incendiary grenade ready. Because we're going to get ambushed by four Colmillos. We'll go over here. Take the uh, Moonstone, cook our grenade, toss it. And in this case, uh, I tossed the grenade a little far, so... I had to fight this guy, and he was uh, not going down easy. Accidentally opened the map there.
kind of got lucky. So it's like, what, two, three Comios? I think it might be four unprofessional at DA10. But after that, you know, we got both halves of the Moonstone. There's, there's, there's not, there's no other, there's no other uh, items or treasure or anything like that worth getting, because we're just gonna get ambushed by more Comios if we, uh, if we go anywhere else. Before I move on uh, and make my save, I'm gonna cancel this and uh, gonna do a little bit of uh, do some merchant stuff. Incendiary in there. There's a spinel on top of this bed here. A mirror with pearls and rubies. And treasure box. Welcome! I opted to get the TMP here because the TMP is great at uh, breaking down locks and taking out the uh, gold helmet zealots. Ah, but for now, I decided to just I'll go ahead and sell all the treasure. Might as well at this point. Well, not all the treasure. I actually decided to keep the uh, what are you butterfly lamp because we're going to get another. And with any luck, I might even be able to get some blue eyes. Stranger? Going to go ahead and max out the rifle. We still got 236,000 pesetas left. Come back any time. Might have been a good idea for me to up upgrade the shotgun, but probably not actually. Nah. No, that's not necessary. I'm going to set up for making the save because exiting the uh, the cage is actually a bit frustrating. So I just decided to do as much as I could before the cage section, so that that way if I had to reset the game, I wouldn't have to do anything, like any of this stuff all the way over again. Pop the wine glass. And when we go in here, we gotta just eek around this corner and hug this wall as tightly as we can, because if we move even one pixel to the right, we trigger the uh, we trigger the cage. If you move your hand any further than you're supposed to in order to grab that flash grenade, you trigger the cage and you are trapped and probably also screwed. With that being said, this is where I make my save. Well, first I'm actually going to go ahead and sell that uh, red, green, yellow mix. Got a selection of good. What are you selling? Just because it's uh, burning a hole in my inventory. Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. And get rid of. Is that all, stranger? And the extra TMP ammo that I don't need. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? And now we buy the TMP. Is that all, stranger? I don't buy the stock yet. Because inventory's a little tight. If I took my own advice and uh, actually bought the TMP instead of the Blacktail, though, then I would have room for the TMP <laughs> and the stock. Thank you. Come back any time. But that's okay. We will remember next time. We'll add that as our two-handed weapon and move a... Actually, a regular grenade into our grenade slot. For reasons you will see in the next segment.
An adjustment to the strategy dictated that I needed to have a flash grenade equipped instead after some experimentation with this area, but yeah, once the uh, once the thing closes down, toss a flash after all the enemies come in. That way it immobilizes a uh, rather annoying crossbow zealot. This Garador is actually not going to chase you around so much, but he can sniff you out, so we want to use that opportunity to lure him away from the gate. And once that's done, all the other enemies in the room will be spawned. Yeah, will be stunned. Excuse me. The grenade took out the lock. We're able to kick it down. Just go directly to the door. Shouldn't have to worry about getting shot after that. So a very worthwhile spot to plant a flashbang. At least one of these zealots is going to spawn a plaga. So I decided to just go ahead and torch them. The uh, incendiary grenades aren't useful for too much more. Yeah, it's either torch or go for the... Uh, It's either torch or go for the suplex, but unfortunately that one was down to 1 HP, so when I shot him it wound up spawning a uh, Type 3 Plaga. There's a delayed, uh, delayed death animation on that one. So he was a bit of a jerk. Took uh, more than one sniper bullet before he actually uh, left his host. Now we can climb up here. It's going to be some rifle bullets in there. Just take these guys out one by one. Actually, it's not necessary. I just decided to go. I just decided to go, go, because when we come back into this room, all of these enemies will be despawned. So there's really no reason to fight all of them. Probably just get rid of the ones down by the lever and... Uh, Immobilize the one or two that uh, follow you out the door, and then, last but not least, just knock the lantern down, get out. Couldn't visit the merchant just yet because that zealot was uh, insistent on chasing me all the way to the door. So the start of the uh, start of the mission, we're gonna free Ashley, and we'll take out these uh, first couple of uh, zealots over here. Yeah, for some reason, his head didn't explode whenever I shot him in the head. Next we're going to pull down this painting, grab the gold bars, and another spinel. In order to stop these enemies from spawning in infinitely, we got to take out the red zealot first. And uh, then we're going to take out the crossbow guys, and then that should leave the three left that are there to just abduct Ashley. I got the key! I can get out! Well... Actually, it was just one left, but that's okay. While I was waiting for Ashley, I uh, looted the rest of the room. Just to save a little bit of time here and there. Small optimizations, where you can afford them, are pretty nice. In order to deal with these guys, the easiest way to do it is to just pull up the lever and run back into this room so that you lure both of them 
into this room. You just need to lure them into the room. You don't need to do anything else. Then you go under here and pull the lever again. And they're trapped out there. Now you're free to just turn these cranks. Super, super easy. And there's another red herb. So we got a red, a green, and a yellow. Easy 10,000 pesetas. Hit the switch on the far end. Hit the switch in the middle of this room here. Grab the stone tablet. The green herb. Then we'll uh, push the shelf over. Hit that button over there. Which will lead us into the innermost chambers. I have the option for a 180 degree turn on, turned on, and uh, if you have it on, then you just hold the right analog stick for about a second. You just hold down on the right analog stick for like half a second, and then your character will just turn around immediately. Just do a 180 turn. The solution to the puzzle is uh, just move the one piece in the center, and then just uh, move everything clockwise or counterclockwise it doesn't let you manipulate the pieces anymore and then you just uh put in the last piece you're good to go gold bangle here and the uh crest over here we'll open this take the uh serpent ornament we'll move past the armadurius by moving to the right we got to be careful with the qtes here if you find that uh if QTE is particularly difficult to do, then uh, try just repeating it until you get the re repeating the same motion until you get the desired results. In the case of like whenever I have to move the controller upward, like so, um, there have been some times where it just didn't register, so I had to just keep repeating the action multiple times until the uh, game just decided to give it to me. We don't push on the uh, push on the lever. We just do a crank there this time. We'll take those treasure boxes and then give the rest of our stuff to Leon, and then that will be the end of chapter three four. Before we proceed with the game, we're going to go on a little side quest. Once we come back in here in 4-1, all the enemies that were in here are going to be despawned. I'll buy it at a high price. So now we're just going to sell a bunch of stuff. Uh, Is that old stranger? I sold a box of handgun bullets, a box of <laughs> thank you. This, a box of that, you know, some grenades. Hand grenades in this game aren't uh, aren't what terribly are you useful, selling? I think. What are you buying? Is that all? Well, in the VR version, anyway. <laughs> thank you. What are you buying? Could have actually just dropped down in order to get the rocket launcher there, but whatever. Anyway. 
by getting the attache case XL, we got exactly enough room for a rocket launcher. Saw an extra box of handgun bullets. Gives the opportunity to reload my gun, get them out of my inventory so I could pick up the rocket launcher. When we go back into the dining hall, Matalo. we have to deal with a number of these... a number of these uh, gold helmet zealots. Just use tack reloads to get rid of them. Don't worry about the ones at the far end. We're just going to take this guy out. We don't need to go over that way. Quick leg shot and a suplex is enough to get rid of that guy. It does aggro the other enemies, but we are out of, out of the room before they can actually catch up to us. It's all a pretty obnoxious bunch of enemies. So gotta watch out for snakes. So we need Ashley to open the door here, and uh, once we get in, we actually need to tell Ashley to follow us again, because it uh, automatically separates us. Automatically separates Leon and Ashley. So now we gotta make room for the broken butterfly, which is... A 2x4 weapon. Can start getting rid of some of these uh, some of these extra hand grenades here. Also keep in mind you gotta hold the uh, cursor position for about a quarter of a second before it'll register. Broken Butterfly is super useful for helmeted enemies. I would say it's very good for that. Pass Carsey, do you really need any of that? No, you don't.
Well, okay, I guess I just spend a couple of extra minutes selling some extra things. Got a selection of good what are you selling? Ah, <laughs> thank you. Not gonna lie. Doing no damage in this has been a lot of fun. Wait here. Once we get into this room over here, we're just going to uh, break the chains over there. Get rid of these. Uh, get rid of these dragon things. Quick and easy. They give us treasure for getting rid of both of them. What's also worth noting is that uh, reload speed upgrade is not a thing in this version of the game because it all comes down to your hand dexterity. So the more practiced you are at reloading your guns, the quicker you are. So the TMP, I would highly recommend gripping the TMP with both hands, because if you don't, then the TMP jumps everywhere. It's also a lot better with the stock, consequently. done with all that we got all the pieces of the chimera puzzle from the end of 3-1 and some shotgun shells in there. I actually have no idea if those are static drops or not. I'm gonna take a quick right, go upstairs. Hand grenade in this plot and some gold bars behind the painting. Those are worth 5,000 pesetas.
knife this open. Take the velvet blue and uh Yeah, we don't need those handgun bullets. When I came through here, I realized that there was a uh, there was a painting that I just walked right by. Which also has another 5,000 pesetas. So our inventory is full. The merchant is right over here. I was debating which weapon I wanted to have. Wait! For the next room coming up. I forgot that enemies don't spawn there until oh. after you get both of the cups. The goblets. So first we gotta get our gun out of the way. Wait! And uh, have Ashley wait. Push statue A, push statue B, get this door open. Follow me. And uh, before the cutscene is triggered, we can actually shoot all of these lights at the top, but there's four of these switches that you have to shoot. It's seriously impossible to mess up. Is there red in the room? Just shoot it. Same with these dudes, you know, just one bullet each. We'll take them out. Open the gate. Elegant chessboard in there. We'll open this and uh, take the Queen's got the Queen's Grail. And then head back into the corridor of royalty. So all that's left is a little bit of uh, inventory management, then we'll make the next save. Welcome! Got some rare things, what are you selling? Is that all, stranger? Red and yellow mixes are worth... Uh, Forty five hundred. <laughs> Thank you. Which sort of triples the cost of the green herb. Or triples the price of the green herb, I should say. That you combine with it. <laughs> Thank you. With the yellow herb. Start selling some grenades. Got those out. What are you buying? So while I was at it, wanted to check and see what I could tune up over here. And Is sure enough, there's a firepower stranger? upgrade. We're not going to upgrade the capacity <laughs> just yet. Thank you. Don't really get enough money to just be upgrading things willy-nilly quite so soon. Went with the rifle and the flash grenade. We're doing that for the Armadurius fight coming up next.
So the Armadurius can actually be taken out relatively easily. As long as you get enough flash grenades. I would say for maximum safety, try to have like four flash grenades. I like to use either the rifle or the broken butterfly here. Basically, we just uh, tap them in the head with the rifle. Type 1 Plaga, come out. Flash Grenade comes out. All dead. And then we get to do it again, this time with Type 2 Plaga. Yeah, basically, because we can run and gun now, these guys are free. Wanted to go back and make sure that I collected the shotgun shells, but I did that before the fight started. Follow me. Wanted to equip the shotgun here, although probably would have been fine just keeping the rifle out because there's plenty of enemies in this next wave that necessitate the rifle. Sure enough, that was correct. I have no idea how I missed that shot. I guess I just jerked up at like the very last second. So I have a capacity upgrade that I could use to reload that gun. I decided to shift back over to the TMP. Let these guys come in. From this distance, because we don't have the uh, shoulder stock, the TMP is going to jump a lot. One thing to note is uh, whenever you hold any of these guns with two hands, is that the aiming, your aiming hand, subsequently becomes the hand that you are holding the front of the gun with. So just be mindful of that. Yeah, you can see because you can't uh, decapitate these guys. It's better to just... Uh, better to just use the TMP on them and... Uh, do as much damage to them as possible, as much direct damage to them as possible. Because they're not going down in one hit. Lucky Magnum ammo drop here. So watch out for that snake. There's a couple of cabinets here with some goodies in them. I'll slash this open, take the shotgun shells and the red herb. Ashley's going to get abducted, and we got to make sure that we have the TMP out for these Navistadors. Quick check to make sure that I have the magazine fully loaded. You could also use the handgun here if you want. It's whatever. Where are you going, Leon? All these Navistadors die in one hit. <laughs> 
So the best thing to do here is, as soon as the cutscene is over, turn left and head for the door. Just head out and jump over. So these guys are going to bash through, and Navistadors, whenever they're flying, actually die in one shot. So that is, uh, that is important. You see one flying around? Just uh, tab it with the handgun until it dies. They will dodge the shots every so often. Like whenever they move, they swing left and right. They'll do a little spinny thing, but they're not gonna they're not gonna follow over this way. Just gotta keep just gotta keep trying to shoot them with the handgun. One tap is all it takes. As long as you take Navistadors nice and slow. Ooh, almost missed that one. As long as you take Navistadors nice and slow, they're pretty easy. For this guy, gotta try and bait out a jump, because every so often, whenever we bait out the jump, is when they'll start flying. Of course, when they're flying, they have the most opportunities to hit you, so watch out for that. Right about now is when I start to realize that the value of TMP bullets are certainly a lot better than handgun bullets. But also I wanted to equip the TMP here so that we could just... ...dump a million bajillion bullets into this Navistador hive here. I, uh... ...shot that Navistador and he landed into the void, so we're not getting any treasure from him. A few clips is all it should take. In order for the hive to drop, and then we get a lot of red eyes, green eyes, and a blue eye. So if at any point, you know, you got a blue eye from, Navis from a horde of Navistadors in general, you should have at least a red eye, a green eye, and a blue eye, like two sets of, by this point. Which can be combined with uh, the butterfly lamp that we got in the first Navistador area, and the butterfly lamp that we got in the area to the right of this room, right before Ashley got abducted. We'll head to the clock tower exterior next. Pick up the handgun Welcome. ammo. We're gonna do some more, uh, some more merchant Got stuff. Some rare things on sale. What are you buying? First up, that capacity upgrade. Is that all straight? <laughs> Fifteen hundred <laughs> for you. what? Seventeen bullets. I would say that that's a really, really good deal. What are you selling? Ah, I <laughs> thank you. Come and that's it. Anytime. There's two zealots that can be sniped at the top of that tower over there. And in doing so, it will prevent the catapults from firing at the tower. Had to be quick before that third volley caught up. First, uh, first piece of wood is there. Second piece of wood is up there. And then we gotta climb all the way to the top in order to shoot out the last piece of wood. 
pretty much all the drops up here are pretty useless. Save for like a green herb over here if you need it, but... I almost pulled that without shooting that last piece of wood there. Blocking the gears. We're just gonna keep the uh, black tail equipped. And uh, we're just gonna, well actually the uh, the TMP, the TMP is actually the best for this room. I actually recommend just like, just like running and gunning through this whole thing with the TMP, just cause TMP is just a really quick stun. Dynamite up there, we'll just blow it up. Just try to shoot everything in the legs so that it trips. And it's pretty nice being able to just run through everything with the TMP and shoot it in the leg. Because you can just swing right on by. We'll equip the uh, incendiary grenades here in order to take out these shields. And then we're going to go into the menu and switch out for a flash grenade. We'll wait for these guys to collapse, and move forward, and then these guys are going to spawn in. So just tossing a singular flash grenade will be enough. Next, we're going to equip the rocket launcher and fire it directly in the center of the door in the back of the room before these other guys see us. I'm trying to keep steady. Because remember, we, uh, we only get... We only get one chance with the rocket launcher. And we have to hold it with both hands. So that already makes aiming with the rocket launcher pretty unsteady. Because of 60 FPS, I have no idea why uh, the Garadors do not go down in one shot with the rocket launcher. So you have to finish it off. Just, uh... Singular shotgun shell. Maybe a handgun bullet? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if it's just a handgun bullet. And I pull the trigger to get around that. There's a couple of pieces of uh, treasure around these parts. Velvet blue, we got a lot of ammo here, some TMP and uh, Welcome. magnum rounds. And then we pick up the uh, pick up the crown. Some rare things on sale. Sell is our family crown, super useful. What are you selling? We'll go ahead and sell the shotgun. Ah, Slightly upgraded I shotgun is uh, forty thousand pesetas. <laughs> so supplements for uh, about. Yeah, pretty much the entire uh, the entire cost. Stranger. Stranger, now that's a weapon. Pretty much the entire cost of the striker, and the striker also takes up like fewer inventory slots, fires faster. It's just Thank a far you. superior shotgun in general. Old stranger. Highly recommend. <laughs> Thank you. What we also got to get rocket launcher for uh, Vertigo. Ah. I'll buy it at a high. I do wish that there was a sell all button that just allows you to sell all of your Is treasures all at once. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't combine that quite so soon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? No past car scene, nothing to upgrade there yet. But we can upgrade the Is firepower and the striker. <laughs> Thank you. Up to 7.0, which is about where we had the shotgun before. Yeah, there was really no reason for me to spend 120,000 on the uh, on the black tail. I could have actually dumped it into the TMP instead. 
I'll remember that next time. <laughs> Thank you. But I'd say the Broken Butterfly is definitely worth tuning up at some point. There's no cutscene here introducing Vertigo. You just hear it roaring at you. Put that together with the green and yellow that we already had, and then we'll move the rocket launcher into a two-handed weapon slot. Because Vertigo goes down in one shot, I would say the bigger enemy in this fight is the QTEs, rather than Vertigo itself. Vertigo, Verdugo. Where's the right emphasis on the right syllable? Yeah, somehow I was able to dodge the QTE over here. I got pretty lucky on this one. Once we pull this ladder, he'll uh, stop trying to QTE us. We pretty much win at this point. I grab the shotgun shells, and then push the button to open the shutter. After that, we can just scoot right on by Verdugo and pull the liquid nitrogen container, wait for him to run into it. Ha <laughs> ha you f***ing dumbass, you activated my trap card. So we get the crown jewel from killing Vertigo. Crown jewel is, uh... The two crown jewels make the crown worth quite a lot of money. There's also handgun bullets and a first aid spray here, and that is the end of 4-1. It seems that's... to the merchant over here to check and see if we can't upgrade anything but we also need to pick up a rocket launcher welcome two rocket launchers actually this scenario got some rare things on what are you boy would highly recommend stranger stranger now that's a weapon of course not until we uh lighten selling? up our load just a little bit is that all, stranger? Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Quick tune-up check. I try to leave about... 100k, just to make sure that uh, we what have enough to buy buying? rocket launchers later. Stranger, stranger, now that's a weapon. <laughs> Thank you. Come back any time. But the reason we need two rocket launchers is... One, so we can blow up a boulder, and two, so that we can 
kill an El Gigante. Now we get to use the striker. Don't gotta pump it or nothing. But of course, Plaga, you know, they uh, they seem to resist shotgun shells. So they play that shit. We retaliate. up that boulder with the rocket launcher and then we are going to hightail it back to the merchant and buy another rocket launcher. Welcome. Got a selection of what are you buying? Stranger, stranger. Now that's a weapon. <laughs> Thank you. That's 75,000 left. Come back any time. Can I equip a striker? This was the first time I used the striker in VR, so I had to figure out how to load it. You only have to load in, like, one shell, and then click it in. <laughs> Some magnum rounds and a hand grenade there. And we just pop that guy, get him out of the way. Take this first aid spray. And then we will trigger the appearance of El Gigante. Then we'll load up our rocket launcher, two-handed weapon. And then we'll pop this first El Gigante. Just take him out of the equation immediately. And in a second, we're not going to be needing any needing to expend any more ammo, so we'll just walk over here. Grab the treasure box, which is a good 30k does. We'll slide down here. We can't use the Dittman glitch because the uh, it's just a uh, fundamentally fundamentally the way aiming works has been changed. So consequently that means that uh, the striker glitch which would have allowed us to run twice as fast in the original game does not work here. So we gotta wait for the door to close. Because if we get close to that, then El Gigante is uh, gonna drag us down there with him. Take the incendiary and the shotgun shells. Now we've entered the Navistador Hive. Because this is a room with flying Navistadors. We just gotta. We just gotta poke them. Anytime we see a Navistador and it's flying, we shoot it. If they're crawling, we just shoot them out of the way until they eventually start flying again. Because remember, shooting a Navistador. Oh, you can see that. Yeah, they're they're clipping through the walls and stuff. That's something that uh, that Navistadors have just historically always done, is they fly above and below the map. And eventually, this leads to them clipping through floors and some such. I was looking for that guy, but I didn't even didn't even realize he was behind me. So 
Gotta watch out for that. They also seem to grab you a bit less. In any case... Making sure we kill them all is what's most important. Because... If we ain't killing them, they're crowding on us. Especially these guys here. Now once these guys spawn in... Somehow that guy didn't die, so... Gotta use the striker here. Stay back. As long as you hear beating wings, you are in danger. And you must get ready to shoot. Hopefully after hitting that switch, no Navistadors fly above or below the map and decided to clip through that tunnel. I've seen it happen to many a speedrunner, and every single time it is very frustrating. Also, Navistadors killed my wife and my dog. mob of Navistadors will show up after we hit this switch, so we gotta get ready. The striker is uh, absolutely necessary for this. So at this point, yeah, they were pretty close. I decided to just run circles Basically, I just like to make sure that there is not a single Navistador left alive, because I don't like surprises. Navistadors are extremely unpredictable. So, climb down 
And then once we drop down here, we gotta look to the left for a switch. If we pull that, it stops the one in the middle. And now we can proceed to the end. Going to straight up go ahead and uh, skip saving here because there's a typewriter next to the merchant in the next room. Welcome! Got some rare thing. What are you selling? Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Come back any time. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and uh, combine. You can actually switch between which uh, which butterfly lamp you want to combine the jewels with. If you just... the little thing in the icon to the upper left. What are you selling? You just press that. Ah, so we got I two full butterfly it. lamps. Is that all Saw the rest of these up? eyes. Spinel and... The crown. We'll sell those. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're up to two hundred forty-nine thousand pesetas. What are you buying? Is that all, stranger? Increase the firepower. <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't really say that a capacity upgrade is really all that necessary for this striker. <laughs> Thank you. We still got plenty of ammo in the rifle, so we don't need to upgrade the capacity yet. <laughs> uh, there I go, upgrading the upgrading the black tail again. It's really just more than is nece necessary to manage. But same deal with the uh, with the broken butterfly. I would recommend uh, waiting until you're at zero ammo to. Initiate a capacity upgrade. There's uh, no... There's no reason to buy a rocket launcher here yet, uh, here yet either. Yeah, at this point what I guess I selling? was debating when to pick up the stock. Is that all? And the stranger? answer was like five <laughs> chapters ago. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I really didn't need that many grenades. <laughs> what are you selling? Yeah, you can tell that I'm uh, <laughs> not very organized or very well routed in the things that I wanted to pick up. <laughs> Thank you. In this particular playthrough. got nothing to do with inventory, with how organized my inventory looks, even though I know a lot of you are pretty unhappy with that. Stranger? Oh, what the heck? I thought I moved those. Fascinating. <laughs> Thank you.
Gonna do the entirety of 4-3 in one take. So directly to our right. If you just keep hitting one of the uh, fire-breathing Ganado while it's uh, still on fire, you'll actually kill it very quickly. Because I think it just takes repetitive damage from the uh, from the fire. And no matter what happens, once we go past that point, these guys are always going to be aggroed. We have to turn this crank to the left as fast as we can. And then hit the uh, underground mines over here. Capping these guys as we go along. We'll go ahead and take out this door. It's not a uh, useful door, in my opinion. Straight up getting rid of that guy. Chainsaw guy. Switch over to the striker. Oh, interesting. Is there like a little bit of uh, pause while you're like fading out of the out of the pause menu? And you're actually able to call up the weapon wheel during that time. I gotta experiment with that. Yeah, it's like sometimes it's actually very good to actually like look at your look at your runs, look at your old footage because that way you just notice little things. Just like little buffers and crap that you otherwise wouldn't have noticed before. All these guys are just directly in the way. Whenever we grab the key upstairs, more will spawn in, so be ready for them. We can do that by uh, just going ahead and waxing this guy. Just switch in between the shotgun and the knife. in the barrel over there. We can go down the stairs. You hear the others spawn in. My strat here, my initial strat here was just more or less to just blast right through them with the TMP and then just turn the key and go, but... I didn't actually uh, know where the key would uh, where the key would spawn whenever I got to the door, so I was not able to really practice that, and I just wanted to get these done as quickly as I could. I did not mean to use the broken butterfly there. Oops. Oh well, it's okay. Yeah, you gotta put in the key, and you also gotta turn the key. So you have to know, is the key gonna be to the right of the keyhole, or the left of the keyhole? So you can grab it. These guys are down in a couple of shots. Gives you enough time to 
shoot out the red lights. Got lucky with a magnum ammo drop there. So now we're at the mines. Incredibly easy with free aim, just, you know, move around and shoot. And uh, shoot things before they get into your cart. Somehow I just completely missed that guy. A not so subtle reminder that, uh, I actually needed to be holding the TMP with both hands. That's what happens when you don't hold the TMP with both hands. Is it jumps around everywhere. You can use one shot at a time, but it's fine. I should do some shots point blank, but I still recommend holding it with two hands. By the way, in the VR version, the uh, Dr. Salvadors actually do not spawn in any money, so don't bother with it. Just go ahead and shoot them down. At least as far as I saw, Dr. Salvadors did not spawn in money. Honest, it's kind of not really worth the risk anyway. Exactly long enough. You just use the wooden plank to kill these guys as well. If you didn't just go ahead and knock them over. <laughs> That's silly, those guys just despawn. So this skull over here has a lot of treasure, which we can just mash the crap out of the grab button to pick up. button as fast as I possibly can so that the guys behind me don't get me.
this section here is also not brutal at all. As long as you take it nice and slow. Every single one of these encounters always starts with some Ganado or some Zealot doing a mean thing, and then we have to be mean to them in turn. seen very many Plaga in this section. Meanwhile, those guys are just doing a fat lot of nothing. There's no need to go up to that upper tier over there. I think in order to turn that arm on, you had to go to the back of the statue or something like that. That would have made a lot more sense to just be shooting that guy. I will definitely remember that for next time. So once we got down there and flipped that switch, we got these other three left to go, but I don't know. I don't even think killing them was really that necessary. Because it's not like they can chase you with any semblance of speed. Actually, yeah, because I didn't actually go up to the third tier of the first side of the room, the third floor of the first side of the room. Probably was a good idea to go ahead and wax those guys. Oh, dang. How was I out of ammo? Probably because I didn't reload my gun. Although I think in general it probably would have been best to use the shotgun overall. Instead of rifles. Yeah, I haven't seen a single Plaga anytime I've gone through this room. So I don't know if these guys even spawn Plagas at all. Once this is done, I'm going to run back to the save point so that uh, we have a save before ascending Salazar's tower.
So after that big bunch of QTEs, walk over to this treasure chest. There's a yellow herb in here. I know I say herb and herb interchangeably. I try to say it herb because herb is the American pronunciation of the word, I guess. I don't know. It's like it doesn't matter how you pronounce it. Herb or herb is fine. But anyway, yeah. So we took out the first three, and then we gotta take out the uh, guy with the dynamite up there. Slash that, get the shotgun shells and the incendiary grenade. Then push both of these boxes off of this elevator. Re-equip the sniper rifle and press the button. Once we do that, we gotta look directly behind us in order to take out this first guy. Then we gotta turn around again. There's another one directly behind. And after that, it's just a matter of uh, equipping the striker and knocking these dudes off of the elevator. You either score a kill or you score a knockoff. If they regain balance on one of their legs, that is a cue to shoot them off the elevator. Of course, when there's two or more zealots on the elevator, the whole thing stops. It's always for the best to just knock them off. Because by knocking them off, they are less likely to spawn Type 2 Plaga. Definitely want to go for the uh, ones with the red helmets first, though. Because those take direct damage in order to kill, and you can't just kill them with... Uh, you can't just kill them with uh, shotgun headshots. Push comes to shove. They need to take direct damage. Some TMP ammo out of the barrel. I have no idea if that TMP ammo there is static or not. Some handgun, sh handgun bullets and shotgun shells there. Red herb. And if we drop down here, there's another treasure. Gold bangle. I usually like to make a save after the merchant over here because... Sometimes things can just go wrong during the Salazar fight. If you don't fire the rocket fast enough or you miss the rocket, then you get grabbed by one of the tentacles, so... That's why I decided to make another save so soon. Welcome! Got some rare things, what are you selling? So first up, we'll sell all, ah, I'll buy all of the healing items here. Price. Get rid of some of these extra grenades as well, because now we absolutely do. Now we absolutely do need rockets. Here is when I decided to sell the Blacktail, as I should have done quite a long time ago. Also, some extra treasures here to get rid of. <laughs> Thank you. I'm up 150k. Stranger, stranger. Now that's a weapon. <laughs> Thank you. What Next, are you buying? Tuning up the broken butterfly. Stranger. To maximum. Also need one capacity upgrade. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> yeah, Somewhat unnecessary upgrade at that point. <laughs> Definitely want to upgrade the capacity of the rifle so that we can get 20 bullets. Come back any time. Then we're going to move the broken butterfly to the one-handed weapon and the rocket launcher to two-handed weapons. First, we open the fight. Try to shoot as uh, close to the top right of the eye as possible. If you shoot any further to the down and the left, then the tentacle will not drop and uh, Selazar's body will not be revealed. Once that happens, just switch over to the rocket launcher and uh, pop him, and he's dead. This works on every difficulty. Before we proceed... Going to pick up anything and everything. treasure box that uh, Salazar drops is worth 50,000 pesetas. There's nothing else out here worth getting. I'm just gonna head straight down. Merchant over here as well. Got some rare things on... We get a free tune-up. Well, we get more tune-ups out of it. Selling. Is that all, stranger? So selling green <laughs> herbs, handgun bullets. Bit of housekeeping. Not enough housekeeping. But we definitely want to keep those flash grenades. Never know when they're going to come in handy. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Is that all? <laughs> Firepower upgrade for the striker. More or less just decided to save my money there. So 5-1 is a pretty brutal scenario. Dr. Salvador is uh, replaced with JJ.
before we proceed though, we gotta knock out that spotlight because if we don't, then we have a lot more enemies to fight. Gotta decapitate this guy first before JJ spawns in. So this way we're able to just uh, keep looping JJ, pow. Basically every time he raises his gun, he is completely vulnerable. He will take mad hit stun, as long as you're hitting him with a rifle or uh, the broken butterfly. Alright, so done that. Enemies are going to spawn in pretty regularly now. And a lot of them have a lot of long range weapons, either throwing weapons, crossbows. I think there might be only like one crossbow, but a lot of like axe throwers. A lot of axe throwers here. So I'm just ready to get around those. But if we jump over here. If there's like a lot of enemies, then you know, you can just like kind of kite them backwards one at a time. But yeah, you know the drill. Striker for regular enemies, rifle for shielded enemies and plaga. You can also use the uh, striker if you go back here to just knock them into the water. They have nothing that is worth collecting. So you can just shoot them in the legs, splash. Boom, splash. Really, you could just stay back here the whole time. But then the uh, crossbow guy comes out, as you can see. In favor of not wanting to uh, not wanting to wait in order to take him out. Okay, well that's just that was just that was just sad. I am so happy that you can just sidestep throwing weapons and crossbows. Because I feel like you couldn't do enough of that at all. Before the VR version came along. Yeah, basically just uh, keep it up. Just keep cheesing these guys one after the other. Yeah, I definitely could have saved a few uh, rifle rounds here, or shotgun shells here, if I just decided to use the rifle instead. There's some TMP bullets over here. Climb up the ladder. Move it to the left. Then move the other one to the right. Then we're able to get in. Climb up this ladder. There's some magnum bullets over here as well. If there are no enemies aggroed, then you have a QTE here, so watch out for that. So like if you killed all the enemies in the previous area.
that uh, soldier there by the ladder, you definitely want to shoot him because there is a chance that he will not be pointing. So we go over here, we're going to wait for the rocket launcher guy to raise his rocket. We gotta stand a ways away so that he blows himself up. We can blow up the barrel over there. Welcome. Got some rare things on. What are you buying? Here, gonna go for the tune-up. Is that all strength? Capacity upgrade. Thank you. Means free magnum bullets. Well, I decided to get a capac. Well, yeah, the firepower upgrade. Thank I didn't go for any capacity upgrades this whole playthrough. Man, if I didn't buy the black tail. If I didn't buy the black tail, I'd probably have the exclusive uh <laughs> Thank you. The exclusive TMP upgrade by this point in the by this point in the playthrough. Loading save. Resets the positions of all the enemies. We can just directly go through this door before they jump down. That guy there. Guess he's like a prisoner of some kind. Yeah, Los Illuminados did not treat that guy very well at all. Some shotgun shells in the case over here. And then when we come around the corner here, there's going to be a uh, guy charging out of the refrigerator. Get rid of him pretty fast. Well, refrigerator. Oven. Something, I don't even know what that is. The game's like, oh, what was he doing in there? And I don't know. Very strange things happening here. I just like don't even know any other way to put it. There's no need to talk to the merchant here. I missed whatever was in that drawer over there. But that's okay. So those dudes wound up blowing themselves up, but funny enough, whenever they uh, whenever they die, occasionally I've actually had the dynamite blow up, and uh, whenever those guys spawn in, the frame after. It actually, uh, it actually caused all those crossbow dudes to just get knocked over. I'm actually not sure what uh, causes the garage door to just close. Maybe it's because they hadn't attacked yet. But closing it and reopening it forces them to get back together. Can't use the striker glitch to get past that one. That's 
one of the few cases where using the sniper rifle is a necessity against helmeted enemies. Another red herb for mixing an RGY mix. Getting some cash later. Going to be in and out of here as quickly as we can. Three red, two blue, one green. Just ignore the yellow. Take the freezer card key and grab the TMP ammo on the way out. Our generator wakes up, but we're just going to run right by him. Bait out the attack, run by. The recovery time of the regenerators is actually quite slow. Regenerators are actually uh, not as dangerous as they seem. We gotta make sure that we uh, get the key as well, otherwise we can't proceed any further. Some rifle rounds to the left. And then to the right, put in the key card, turn off the freezer, thaw at the regenerators, and uh, grab the infrared scope. Because it is absolutely worth it. Combining the infrared scope with the sniper rifle. We're now able to see the Plaga on the bodies of the regenerators. The speed at which you can just straight up snap to the targets is... Uh, Quite scary, actually. Not worrying about like you know fixed rate of uh, fixed rate of movement on the aiming or anything like that. So we can effectively stun lock these guys. In order to get to the plaga on their backs, so you just got to shoot out their legs. TMP ammo and a uh, hand grenade. We're not going to play the crane game. We can just jump right down and use the TMP to scoot right on by these guys. Easy peasy. Yellow herb over here. Decided to drop the green in order to pick it up. Because greens on their own are only 500 pesetas. So if you're going to throw something away, throw away the uh, item that costs the least. Even a full case of handgun ammo winds up being worth more than a green herb. Green herb, green herb. Yeah. 
The icon on the top right, we just uh, hold the A button on that in order to unequip the rifle scope. Got to move back a little bit so that the uh, Plaga will just immediately burst through the door. We shield dude over here, and then there's going to be a uh, flash grenade directly to the right. Maybe should have dropped the handgun ammo instead. Checking to make sure that there wasn't anything under the stairs. And proceed to the research lab. Got to reattach the scope now so that we can get rid of... Iron Maiden. Sometimes if you fire too fast while the uh, enemy is recoiling like that, you'll wind up missing by like a pixel. I decided to just go ahead and uh, go over to the merchant, offload the extra stuff we got, but not before trying my luck with the TMP and uh, some of these crows over here. It takes like two shots from the TMP to actually take down the crows. I think you need to have a weapon with a uh, rating of 1.0 at least to kill a crow in one shot. Or maybe they just have more HP, I don't know. Welcome! Got a selection of good what are you selling? Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Thank you. Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. What are you selling? What are you buying? No treasure worth selling yet. But we got just... No, we don't. Yeah, at this point, I think I was deliberating whether or not I wanted that exclusive upgrade or not. The exclusive upgrade for the sniper rifle is absolutely worth it. Some rifle ammo. Another green and red. Looking for treasure. Anything that I can get my hands on. Well, hand. But then... I still couldn't help but think that I, that I was missing something in here when I picked up the rifle ammo. Yep, there it was. On our way back through here after getting the keycard from the Iron Maiden, enemies repopulate this area.
personally don't think that there's much of a reason to actually get like the uh, scope for the sniper rifle. Just the infrared scope, that's it. Yeah, this guy's getting a little too close for comfort. Guy at the top had a helmet, so TMP was the best option. Switch back over to the striker. Wait for this guy to come up. Boom. I'm trying to stay back so that uh, I can take out the enemies that are rushing at me. Because the enemies that are rushing at me will cut down on all my movement options while I'm trying to dodge the, uh, the guy with the crossbow at the top of the stairs. Because, yeah, you see how quickly he reacts. You see how quickly he reacts to that. Two arrows, then he has to reload, and while he's reloading... Getting a crazy amount of rifle ammo drops as well. It's justified with all the Plaga that we have to kill. This room over here, as soon as we pop around the corner, throw a flash, stuns all these guys. Ashley does have a very high propensity of uh, getting stuck on enemies that are blinded. Enemies in here will spawn type 3 Plaga. Knocked him out of the way, but uh, the guy was in the way. So Ashley just decided not to run around him, just cowered around. Went ahead and uh, th waited for the guy to hit the switch so that we could throw the flash grenade and stun all of them. Switched over to the striker. Got a type 1. You know what to do. Pretty straightforward. Then equipping a flash again. We'll stun these guys and then just run straight through them. There's actually no need to shoot any of them. Because they would have stayed stunned long enough to reach the disposal, and if you just go straight to the disposal, then Ashley will warp into the cutscene. Even if they're grabbed. Or even if they grab Ashley, so. No need to worry about that. About to fight two Iron Maidens. So we gotta get that infrared scope back up. What is that thing? Pull Ashley through, pick up the rifle ammo. And then gonna shoot the first four Plaga off of the regenerator here. Well, Iron Maiden, I should say. I decided to hold off on killing it because by just proceeding through the room normally, eventually I'm gonna get a, get a chance to be able to shoot it in the back. 
after Ashley and Leon push the box over, move back a little bit, and then shoot the Plaga off of the back of the newly spawned Iron Maiden over there. We'll go around the corner and go ahead and kill him. Same as this one. His back is exposed now that he's gone through the, uh, the gate because they can actually pull the levers. We'll be pulling Ashley again. Or pulling, uh, pushing the box with Ashley again. I can't English very well right now. If we tell Ashley to wait, then uh, we can actually take advantage of um, the pathing of the enemies to actually uh, safely bring her over to the exit if one of them just decides to grab her. Which they will. Oh boy, will they, will they do so. Just leave Ashley by the door. Don't worry about it. It's a lot safer this way. Pull the lever. And uh, pay very close attention to any of the uh, any of the rangers over here. We're gonna use every opportunity that we can to knock these guys into the lava. Circle strafe around the lava. Bye bye. See ya. Sayonara. After the door is done, we're going to try to clear as many of these guys as possible. Because after every lever pull, there's uh, another mob of Ganado that just spawn at the top of where we uh, dropped off. But if a Ganado grabs Ashley next to the door, it will actually not take her through that door, and instead it will take her through a door... It will take her through one of the doors where they spawn out of, which is, like, right down here. No! So you can see, just... We're gonna take our time. We're gonna wait for it. Oh, did Ashley just, like... It's interesting that Ashley just, like, kind of teleported right over there. And we're just gonna knock this guy, shoot this guy in the legs, and Ashley will follow us right through. As soon as she gets back up, we'll just pull her through the door. anything and everything I can. Oh, funny enough, I guess if you just like pull the door a little bit, you can actually uh, skip opening the whole thing and you're just able to grab the ammo. I wonder if that works for every door. These regenerators will drop gold bars. Which are 5,000 pesetas each. I do like that items tend to uh, magnetize towards Leon's hand. It's pretty neato. Send Ashley through. Leave it to me, Leon. Pick up this yellow herb, and we'll go to the merchant room for just a moment. Pick up this red. 
I slowed down the timing of this uh, puzzle here. So... Leave it to me, Leon. Because we have to pull this manually. Gives us time to set up. Going through a little bit of prep before we do the auto-scroller. Rifle bullets, shotgun shells, the works. Leave it to me, Leon. My kung fu is stronger than yours. Depending on how far from the ledge they are, whenever they get pushed, whenever they jump, we can actually just knock them straight off. 55 bullets left. It's nice that the uh, that Leon's smartwatch actually shows you like how many bullets you have overall. And not just how many are in the gun, like in the previous versions of the game. Nice little quality of life improvement. As soon as we see the truck, we're gonna swap out for the TMP. Remember, gotta hold it with both hands, stabilize the aim. Three bullets is enough. Swap us back to the striker. I think you just have to hit the truck three times. It doesn't even matter like how much damage you do to it. Impressive the uh, leg strength these guys have. Forward transaction. He jumps, I shoot. I'm leaving it to you. As soon as we climb, enemies are going to spawn at the top. They're all enemies that uh, I'd recommend taking out with the rifle. Sometimes the way they're lined up, you can score two shots, or two headshots in, in a row. But this is definitely a room that you just, you know, just, just, just use the sniper rifle. Don't mess around. I keep hearing them. I keep expecting them to jump down, but... You never figure out where they're jumping down from. No Plaga spawn here yet, either. Help! Well, he's still walking, I expect him to... Then I thought I'd try climbing back up, but uh, nope, nope. I wasn't able to... I wasn't able to get the green herb. Why? 
See them on the bridges, just go ahead and snipe them out. Recommend use of the TMP rather, instead of the rifle for like those first two shots like I did. Basically the end of the auto scroller, except for the truck that we have to shoot. So just re-equip the TMP for that. I don't know why these uh I don't know why these Ganado insist on honking the horn. Because all it does is alert the player to their presence. I mean, it does kind of give the player a fair shot, but if I were the enemy, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. That would be way too easy. It's like a Welcome. big honking shoot me button. Got a selection of good. What are you buying? And more upgrades for everything. Well, actually, it can go is ahead and get exclusive upgrade. <laughs> Thank you. Increases the firing rate. Unfortunately, not enough money to get the exclusive for the Thank TMP you. yet. What are you selling? Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Thank you. Gotta get rid of those handgun bullets past Carsey. But I mean, don't worry about it. It's all good. I just decided to make this a dummy segment in order to just go straight through Krauser. So in case we die to U3, we don't have to restart all the way back from the start of the chapter. It typically will happen. Been a long time, comrade. Krauser. I died in the crash two years ago. Is that what they told you? You're the one who kidnapped Ashley. You got John Quick, as expected. After all, you and I both know where we come from. 
What do you want? <laughs> the sample saddler developed, that's all. <laughs> Leave Ashley out of this! Oh, I needed her to buy Saddler's trust in me. Like you, I'm American. You got her involved just for that? Talk. Die, comrade! <laughs> <laughs> Ada! Well, if it isn't the bitch in the red dress. Looks like we have the upper hand here. <laughs> You may be able to prolong your life, but it's not like you can escape your inevitable death, is it? You knew each other? More or less. Maybe it's about time you told me the reason why you're here? Maybe some other time. We get to go through the whole laser sequence in first person. But really just these two parts. The rest of it is QTEs. Yeah, that second QTE didn't want to work for some reason. Glad it did. Push that button manually. They should have made that whole sequence first person. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the sitting on the chair sequence. Another green herb and emerald under the stairs over here. I'm gonna go ahead and enter the room and then come right back talk to the merchant, but first, yellow herb. Welcome. So while the merchant's opening his coat, I'm just gonna take a second to combine these really quick. Got some rare things. What are you selling? Is that all, stranger? Ah. Solar herbs. Solar handgun price. bullets. Selling that extra grenade. Trying to keep one for Saddler.
Yeah, past Carsey, that's a good place to put that rifle scope, actually. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? We'll go ahead and uh Is that tune up the firepower thing? on the striker. <laughs> Thank you. Takes us down to under ten or a hundred K. Still can't get the exclusive upgrade for the TMP yet. What are you buying? Stranger, stranger. Now that's <laughs> Thank you. We'll take that though. Come back any time. Now I don't know why I went into the menu and equipped the rocket launcher when it's like I knew I needed the TMP to get through the next sequence. Curious how there's a uh, there's an oil drum with a fire in there. It's like, who set that on fire? I'm just gonna move right on by you three over here. Shoot that. Push that. Then we can just strafe on over here. Grab the shotgun shells. Green herb there as well. Pop that. And there is one more switch over here. Initiating the container drop. Just pull the lever before U3 gets to us. Mm, gotta move a little further to the left in order to get that angle. There we go. Before we uh, trigger the appearance of U3, gonna pop that open as well. So we can run straight forward, hit the button. Squeezed right by the container in U3. I think I got really lucky there. did in fact go the wrong way there. I was supposed to just make a Yui and go that way. After pushing this button, U3 pops in. Could throw a grenade over that, uh, over that thing over there. But I wound up just going in a circle. I hadn't practiced that yet, so I didn't want to take any risks of, like, having the grenade just come back down and hit me. Ah. Leon's got some old super strength. It's crazy. Next we're going to equip the rocket launcher, we're going to take a quick step back, and then pop him, and switch to the knife, stab him a couple of times, and he's done. There's gold bars over here, and a red herb. There's really nothing else worth grabbing here. It's just handgun bullets. It's not really much of a point to raising the levers after you're done fighting U3. To the right of the stairs. Grab the green herb. Thank you. 
hand grenade in the cabinet over here. Double back for a moment to look for a typewriter. I was just brute forcing this whole segment. I totally forgot that uh, this encampment over here existed. So just pop the explosive right there. Sniping these guys. Shoot the barrel over there as well. And these guys are going to come up. I don't think any Plaga spawned from these guys either. more treasure in this area. Blue stone of treason, some gold bars to the left. Welcome. Got some rare things. What are you buying? Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. What are you selling? Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Come back any time. What are you selling? Ah, <laughs> thank you. Is that all, stranger? <laughs> thank you. What are you buying? Stranger, stranger. Now that's a weapon. We don't need much anything for Krauser. Just the broken butterfly, TMP, and the knife, really. I can completely ignore him and just run straight through, blow the door down with the TMP, and then we're going to equip the broken butterfly and be aiming at him as he comes up from the bottom. Oh, we're talking. He'll do some dodge moves every so often. Oh, we're talking. Also, he's got the most effective flash grenades I've ever seen in a video game. Shits go right through the walls. Kind of did a little fake out there. You think because he's throwing a grenade, he's throwing a flash grenade? <laughs> no, he's not. Krauser 
always fires in like a sleeping motion, so we can actually beat him before he hits us. Pick up the green herb, go up the stairs, and then grab the first uh, stone over here. Oh, that was close. I almost got hit. I was just being silly. I wanted to see if I could fan the hammer. Would have been really cool if the uh, broken butterfly actually worked that way in this game. In the VR version, but sadly, nah, not at all. So Krauser can be at the uh, lever for the gate. We just want to jump through here and then jump over and uh, Krauser will not spawn in. Switch over to the TMP. And now we're going to take this nice and easy. Just pow, blow those up. Pick up TMP ammo. Got rifle ammo there. I was lucky to get a magnum to get magnum ammo at one point as well during one of the segment attempts. What is it that you fight for, comrade? But actually, I funny enough, I got bones. Magnum ammo right there. Umbrella. After that cutscene, we're just gonna run directly up the stairs and ignore the other robots. There's nothing worth getting on the other side over there, just handgun bullets and a green herb. Prepare for your death, Leon. And all we need for Krauser is the knife. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to keep slashing his right shoulder. And wait for him to attack. Back up. Of course he came doing backflips stuff after his attacks. But once we start wailing on his right shoulder. Uh, basically he just stays stunlocked and we just got to keep turning in order to, uh, keep slashing that shoulder and we just stunlock him to death. The knife has always been the, uh, best option. Oh, oh, I was wrong. That's magnum ammo. <laughs> just kidding. Still them good bullets. Start the segment by detaching the infrared scope and equipping the rifle. We'll move forward until we spawn the uh, Ganado at the turret. You gotta zoom in. And, oh man, that arrow just barely missed me. But yeah, you gotta like, you gotta like tap him at the top of his hair in order for the shot to register. It's uh, pretty dumb like that. We'll pop the, uh, pop the shield guy. Pop the lock with the magnum. We just gotta wait for this next guy to 
drop down behind us. Wow, those guys, those guys really liked it to catch up with me. I'm still looking, trying to find out where the other shield guy went, but whatever. He didn't drop down. Another shield guy was supposed to drop down, and that was supposed to be my cue to uh, go up the ladder. So we'll do a load last checkpoint in order to clear the enemies. JJ will spawn, and then what we do is we uh, we just go. Pop that guy. And that guy almost always spawns a Plaga, so just uh, try to pop the Plaga out of his head before he attacks. Because if he is in the middle of attacking, whenever you pop him in the head, you will not cancel his attack. And you will more than likely get hit. So wait for the attack, then pop the Plaga out, and then run past, hit the zip line, beat JJ. Also gotta slow it up a little bit. Be careful with the, uh, be careful with the, uh, crossbow soldier over there. And then we'll reload the checkpoint again in order to clear enemies. Scoot over to the left. Equip the striker. I like to stay at the top. We got two shield guys over here, so swapped over to the rifle immediately. The order in which these guys come can be a little, uh, a little random. So just do whatever you can with whatever comes first. As soon as the gun turret over there is done shooting, that is when we make our move. Use the broken butterfly on him and on the turret right below. Eventually that turret is going to be, uh, I don't know, I don't remember if the turret gets reoccupied or not, but I just liked it. Crossbow guy, he had to go. I don't play around with crossbows. So that's done. Swap back over to Striker and just be knocking everything over. Especially this guy with the rocket launcher. Break yourself. Yeah, music stopped pretty fast. Until it didn't, and another crossbow guy spawned in. Actually, it wasn't a crossbow guy. I think there's a very limited number of crossbow guys. They don't spawn in infinitely. There's no enemies that spawn in infinitely in Resident Evil 4, as far as I'm aware. That whole siege section is, uh, I'd say probably the uh, second worst part of the game. Next to the cabin in 2-2. Probably reset there more than, about as much as the cabin actually. It's like even with a fully stacked inventory, that whole section has always been pretty bad. Even playing on VR. But at least playing in VR made it a little nicer. Shoot that guy in the leg. In order to reveal the one on his back. We'll take the red. And then we'll go back and we will loot the place. And then make our save. Just got a couple more things to do.
This is the last big mob fight in the game. There's also a lot of Plaga. So gotta be careful about that. Swap over to the TMP really quick. Just kidding, we're going to keep using the rifle. Actually, we can pretty much just go ahead and continuously use the rifle for the rest of this whole section if we wanted to. It's right here at the very end of the game, so... Wait for JJ to stop firing, and then we get right up in his face. But not before we take out this guy. It's getting a little too close. Just keep using the broken butterfly here. Done deal. This last guy, he's not wearing a full helmet, so Just shoot him right in the face. We gotta examine this in order to spawn the uh soldier that has the key card. So what we're going to do next is we are going to blow up that barrel and run for it. Step one, assess the situation. We can run and gun. We're good. Just blow up every single barrel we can find. But they're all scattered, so we gotta find a way to funnel them, right? I know just the place. You guessed it. Big chillin'. Ah, eh, there's two plugger right there, so you know what to do. Keep hitting them with striker headshots as they come around the corner. Reload when needed. Fortunately, reloading is really, really fast. So it's, like I said, it's not really worth it to do anything except to upgrade the power of the striker. Any other stats that you could upgrade are relatively useless, especially the capacity upgrade. Unless you just really want, like, a free 100 shotgun shells. Also, even though the broken butterf butterfly is stronger than the rifle, it still didn't, uh, still didn't kill the Plaga in one shot. The rifle has that property where it can just kill a Plaga in one shot, so... Gotta capitalize on it. Trying to find that crossbow guy. Here he is. Got rid of him. Never 
every time I hear arrows, I'm just sidestepping backwards. These guys just keep shooting arrows forever. Even if they're not looking at you. Yeah, Plugga, never worth it to fight. Never worth it to fight fairly. Just always go for the rifle shot. Maybe dead. Yeah, that one's. That one needs a magnum bullet because he is fully helmeted. There's just a few more left. Just mopping up. Yeah, we don't press that button yet because we gotta use the key card first. Then we go and we press the two buttons. It'd been a hot minute since the last time I played Resident Evil 4, so I had to take a second to look for where we put the key card. So there's really no more obstacles left at this point. Just go fight Saddler. And knock out last few enemies directly in the way. is there. There's also a little bit of extra treasure, but it's kind of pointless at this point in the game because all we got to do is fight Saddler. <laughs> Decapitate him and go directly through the door. Trigger the cutscene. Selection of good things, or what are you selling? All that remains that now, old stranger. This is just free up a nice big <laughs> column. Thank you. What are you buying? To buy a rocket launcher. Stranger, stranger. Now, <laughs> thank you. Come back anytime. start by popping out an eyeball to bring Saddler down and equip the rocket launcher and a hand grenade. And then we gotta aim directly for the eye. The rocket must hit directly at the eye. We gotta wait for Saddler to get back up and start moving again and if a grenade hits the eye will be exposed again. We just gotta pop it again and then Ada will drop the rocket launcher. Run across this bridge over here. 
do a couple of quick QTEs in order to get up the other side. When we grab the rocket launcher, it'll automatically equip. We'll just jump over, and... The end. I decided I would want to make a New Game Plus file, so decided to go for the gold bars. It's an extra 100,000 pesetas. Jet ski at the very end has also been changed. I'm trying to wait for Ashley to uh, catch up. I don't know. Is she going to... Is she going to be at the end? Well, she was when I climbed back up. Can we try this again? There we go. We're just going to take the jet ski key. Apparently the jet ski key is just locking the boat to the anchor point instead of starting the boat this time. Hang on, sweetheart. As you can see, we gotta grab both handles on the jet ski. We just steer the jet ski. Which is a pretty cool little piece of immersion. I actually really like it. So yeah, you just use the grab buttons to hold onto the handles. You use left trigger or right trigger to accelerate. I don't know if it's possible to do flips like you could in other versions of the game, but... This was still pretty cool. That is Resident Evil 4 VR completed without taking any hits. Ah! Ashley! Ashley! Where are you? Leon! <coughs> Come on. Let's go home. Sounds like a great idea. Mission accomplished, right, Leon? Not quite. I still have to get you home safe. So, who was that woman, anyway? Why do you ask? Come on, tell me. She's like a part of me I can't let go. Let's leave it at that. Thank you all very much for watching this no damage playthrough of Resident Evil 4 VR. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out all of my other no damage videos on my YouTube channel. Also check out my Twitch channel. It's where I record the vast majority of these no damage playthroughs. Not this time though. I want to give a huge shout out to Oculus for the sponsorship opportunity. I was actually looking forward to playing this when I first heard of it, and was actually very happy that uh, Oculus reached out to me to sponsor this video. A very strong number of RE fans love RE4, and pretty much everything about playing in VR is a massive quality of life improvement. VR absolutely changes this game for the better, and I kind of don't want to go back to playing it any other way. Go check it out. It's only available on the Oculus Quest 2 and releases on October 21st, 2021. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next video. Bye for now.
Final time, 4 hours, 15 minutes, and 21 seconds. Actually, I wanted to save it in slot 20. I'm one of those guys. 